What is up today? I'd like to share with you one of the most beautiful chess opening traps that I've ever saw that happen against the Scandinavian defense. Therefore, if you play the Scandinavian defense with either color, you gotta be aware of this. It happens after pawn takes. If black goes knight f6, knight c3, knight takes bishop c4, and since the knight over here is attacked on d5 twice with white's bishop and knight, the knight may decide to go back knight b6. There are some other options, of course, but in this video, I'd like to share with you a trap that happens in this line. If you're interested in alternative lines that may happen in the Scandinavian defense, I've got a separate video about this, which I'll link in the YouTube card as well as in the description below the video. Seven best opening traps in the Scandinavian defense that you may check out later after watching this video. Anyway, let's focus on to this line after Bishop going here back to b3. Black will probably make a natural developing move, knight to f3. And here, black may decide to go pawn e5, another standard opening move, uh, enabling the bishop's development on the next move. Here you can play a very tricky move, pawn d3. And all of a sudden, black's in a big trouble here, even though it's really, really hard to notice it. But I'm going to show you with different moves that black may try here, they're going to be in trouble. And if they play one of the most tempting moves, bishop g4, put in this pin, it leads to a very beautiful checkmating combination, which is better than a legal's checkmate that you may be familiar with. Anyway, it starts off with the move pawn h3, putting the bishop back, and after that, if you got to this point, you can certainly take a second to say something like this. <laughs> And after that, you play knight takes e5, offering a queen sacrifice, because black may go ahead and capture your queen here. But then, you play bishop takes f7, and it starts a very beautiful attack against black's king. Now, bishop goes here to g5, which is checked to the king, the only square for the king to go to is square d6. And then you keep attacking with knight going forward to e4, once again it is checked to the black king, therefore it has to move. The only square available is taking this knight over here in the center of the board, then you play pawn f4, and black would have to keep advancing their king forward. If they try to play king f5, it actually leads to an immediate checkmate, which is also quite funny, because after that you go knight g3 checkmate, a very rare checkmating construction with two bishops and a knight. Therefore, that's not an option for black, let's take a move back here, and after white pushes the pawn forward, it forces the black's king to go to d4. That's the way to go, and now rook takes d1. This calm move sets it up for the beautiful checkmate that happens in the following moves. Now, even though black is temporarily up a whole queen, they are defenseless. Just because they're king in the center of the board is something weird. Like, normally you want to centralize any other piece, but not the king, right? But here it's stuck in the center of the board, and it's hard for it to go uh, anything back, you know, to safety, because all these squares are controlled by the white's pawns and pieces. And if black decides to play well, virtually anything, let's say bishop e7 covering their queen, there is another killing move, which is hard to notice, it's the move king going somewhere to e2. What's the trick? Well, the king takes away the last square, the square e3, so that the black's king cannot go here, and now it sets it up for the pawn to c3 checkmate on the next move, and even though black is up a queen, it is black to play, and they cannot stop white from playing pawn c3 checkmate. That's really one of the most beautiful combinations I've ever saw, checkmate by the pawn, and black is defenseless with an extra queen, even though it's their turn to move. Really, really beautiful, let's just execute it, let's say black takes here, you go ahead and play pawn c3, and all the squares are covered, this one covered by the pawn, this one covered by the knight, and this one covered by the bishop, and therefore it is a checkmate. Let's see if there's anything else that black can play here, well, at this point black will probably have to develop their knight, because they can just not, not do that, or else their knight as well as the rook will forever be stuck in the corner, so knight c6 is kind of forced, then knight f3 is natural. Another very common mistake that your opponents will play in this, as well as similar positions, is playing bishop g4 over here, which fails to a common tactical pattern, which you gotta know. It's bishop takes f7. It's a temporary sacrifice of the bishop, because after that, you follow up with knight to g5, check to the king, as well as discovered attack of the bishop. Therefore, you get your bishop back right on the next move, and along the way you won the pawn, this pawn on f7, 
as well as you expose the black's king, for example, you're threatening something like queen a6 checkmate, which gives you a winning advantage overall, even though black can stop an immediate checkmate, but their position is completely compromised. So that's a really great tactical puzzle, uh, tactical pattern rather to, to know, because you can execute in many different openings. And there is also one more attacking pattern that may occur in this position, as well as in many different openings, which I'd like to share with you. Here, what if black says, okay, I don't want any kind of bishop g4 stuff. I'm sick and tired of all those sacrifices. Let me play in the most solid way possible. Let me play pawn e5, just centralizing the pawn, pawn d3, and now bishop d6, right? Let me go there and, you know, just set it up here, it's a rock solid position in the center, preparing castling on the next move, and yeah, I'm fully covered. Strangely enough, in this line, black is also losing, and there is another common attacking kind of combination that you gotta be aware of. It starts off with a move knight to g5, putting pressure onto this pawn, which is under the double attack of the white's bishop and knight, therefore black will say, okay, I was going to castle anyway, but now you play queen h5. And this queen attacks here the square h7 as well as it adds one more attack to the square f7, which is already under the massive fire of the white's minor pieces. And because white all of a sudden has so many threats, black is defenseless. If they play pawn h6, which is the only way to stop queen h7 checkmate, so they get him push this pawn forward, but now I can take the other pawn either with the bishop or the knight and it's gonna be an easy win in any case. Let's say bishop takes here, king goes to h8 and in this case let me ask you to think about this position and to write it down in the comments below if you can find the winning shot for white here. It's also an interesting you know, position to think about, so let me know if you can find it. If you want to know more traps about the Scandinavian defense, I'll attach another video on the screen and in the description below the video where you can get to know some of the best opening traps against the Scandinavian defense. Also, let me invite you to my free masterclass, the best way to improve a chess instantly so that you know how to rapidly increase your chess strength in no time. Thank you very much. Talk soon.